This video contains a list for all those self-loathing sadists out there who want to know about some of the hardest trophies you can earn on PlayStation. I have picked 50 trophies that make their game's platinum trophies absolutely brutal. If you have any of these, I'm not sure if I should be impressed or scared by your unwavering commitment. Now, although this is a video about PlayStation trophies, because I am PC bro, I want to be inclusive of all gamers. So anyone wanting to know about the achievements, I placed a little symbol so you can see if the trophy has an achievement cousin over on Xbox. One, two, three! Woo, woo. Let's get cracking with our first game. Side note, I would make sure you stick around till at least number 17 to see my most wanted difficult trophy. We're going to start this list off with one of the most iconic games from the PlayStation 2 era, Shadow of the Colossus. Even now the PlayStation 2 game is still stunning, but the PS4 remaster will still take your breath away. The game follows Wanderer, a young warrior on a task to defeat 16 mysterious colossi across a land to revive a deceased maiden. It's a game with beautiful visuals, a charged soundtrack and some unique gameplay. It's something you must master if you want to earn all the trophies and of course the platinum. This is a platinum trophy I've had my eye on for years. I've only ever played it when I was a kid and it was the demo in a video game store. Do you remember when video game stores used to have playstations and xboxes you could play on? Good times. But the requirements for some of the trophies have always scared me away. The platinum trophy requires an excessive six playthroughs to earn with plenty of challenging trophies but there's one trophy that is a real platinum stopper and that trophy is called Speed King. For this trophy you must unlock all time attack items together in one save file and to do this you must beat all 16 colossi within a specific time limit not once but twice on normal and hard difficulty. This will require extreme mastery and patience and you really have to push yourself through some long horse rides and frustrating boss battles. The next trophy is from the game Dragon Ball Z or Fighters. I'm not sure which it actually is. As a 90s kid, I absolutely love Dragon Ball Z and I can't tell you the amount of times I try to go Super Saiyan in my youth. Dragon Ball Fighters takes a step back from the 3D fighter arena style of gameplay which most of the previous Dragon Ball games adopted. Instead, it brings it back to what Dragon Ball Z is all about, fighting. Now, the Platinum Trophy is really hard with many of its trophies asking a lot from you, but this is a 2D fighter game after all. The game consists of well-polished gameplay with still to this day some of the best looking anime game graphics ever. With it being a fighter game, you'll have to win a lot of ranked matches to earn the my power level is 530,000 which is for winning too many ranked games online. And there's two ways to get this trophy, either be a literal god of destruction or by getting a friend to boost with you. And because of the boosting, it means that this isn't the hardest trophy in the game. The hardest trophy in the game is called set for life and requires you to acquire 20 million zen. And to put this in perspective, a win in a casual match online will only earn you 3000 zen. Your best bet is to log in daily to get those sweet daily bonuses. Some of them can actually net you up to 200,000 zen if you're lucky, but that doesn't change the fact this is just a real dirty rotten grind. You'll most likely spend 50 to 60 hours working on just this one trophy. If earning this trophy makes you Goku, I'm happy to stay away from it and remain Yamcha. So the next game on this list is a game that I love to hate and it is Hotline Miami. Now I played this game back in April 2022 and I played it because of a recommendation from a good friend Vault Boy Steve and they told me it was a great time and the Platinum was not too hard, like a 6 out of 10. God damn do I disagree with that. You know, almost half a year together, which was really... <laughs> So this game is a retro over the top action game, it's really fast paced, it's basically like you die in one hit, all the enemies die in one hit, it's very frantic, it's a very cool game, it's a very good game. The Platinum Trophy however is so goddamn frustrating, you basically got to master the game to quite a high level and there's one trophy in particular called Get A Life and it is for getting A plus on all of the chapters. Now this requires achieving around 20,000 points per level. It basically means you have to maintain a combo from killing people throughout the whole level. It's not a case of just taking your time. Firstly, one hit and you're dead, so you have to restart the whole run. And the levels are like two to five minutes long, which doesn't sound too long, but if you think one hit and you're back to the start, you're gonna be playing levels over and over again. And it's not just a case of not dying, it's a case of again maintaining your combos and really learning the game and it is absolutely brutal. I found this a really, really big challenge. And by the end of it, a lot of people love the soundtrack of this game. And I have to say, I said in my review ages ago that I had listened to the same five minute song for about four to five hours a day for five, six days until I beat this. The guy says it's like 10 hours, it took me like 30 and 10 hours of it, 15 hours of it was just doing this one trophy. It was a toughie. In preparation for this list video, I asked you to share some of your scarring memories of the hardest trophies you've earned. And I very much enjoyed reading through everyone's stories. The amount of sadness, anger, and frustration was very clear throughout. <laughs> I did find one that caught my eye due to its horrific nature.
So that's right, our next game is Gran Turismo Sport. The Platinum Trophy for this game is an absolute mammoth which will take you around 250 hours to beat with a difficulty of 9 out of 10. You've really got to be good at racing simulators for this one. And the hardest trophy is called Recorded Number of Wins and is for matching Michael Schumacher's record of 91 F1 victories. And for the record it took Michael Schumacher 18 years of racing to rack up this amount of wins. And of course not only do you have to win 91 times, you have to do it all in online. Well done to anyone who has this. With the online being shut down this year, you will be in an elite trophy hunter club for life. Batman Arkham Knight is the final installment in the best superhero trilogy of video games ever made by Rocksteady Studio. It takes everything from Arkham Asylum and City and brings it to a grander scale across all of Gotham City. It has some of the most polished combat in any game I've ever played with a strong superhero story and let's not forget that Kevin Conroy put in an amazing performance as Batman. The trophy list for this game is massive with 110 trophies across the base game and the 16 DLC packs. The content you get with this game is just staggering. The Platinum Trophy is a challenge without a doubt, there's a massive amount of collectibles, two full playthroughs being required and a lot of stars required in the challenge mode. But the hardest trophy in the game is in the final DLC pack and it's called The Curtain Falls and this trophy is by far the hardest trophy in the entire Batman Arkham trilogy. For this trophy you must achieve a flawless free flow in every single round in the Monarch Theatre. And to achieve a flawless free flow you must maintain your combo for the entire round which means you cannot be hit once. I remember struggling to maintain a flawless free flow for just one round when I earned the Platinum in Arkham Asylum but this trophy requires you to do it for all four rounds of the challenge. The Monarch Theatre is easily a 20 to 25 minute challenge and one mistake will send you back to the beginning. This trophy will make you smash controllers, pull out hairs and probably make you seek therapy. If not during it, definitely afterwards. We are five games down into this massive 50 hour list, which is taking me tens of tens of hours. I've spent literally probably five to six hours every night for the past six or seven nights researching and writing and making this video, but I think it's worth it. And with these list videos, I love making them, and as long as you want to watch them, I will keep making them. And if you like the video, then I will know that you want to see more of these videos, so just make sure you do drop this video a like. And of course, as always, a big thank you to all my patrons for all the continued support. Platbro loves ya. <coughs> Fail. Don't die. No. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden was the best operative in the game. <laughs> this is not good. This Next is my most recent difficult trophy and it comes from Watch Dogs Legion. Now Watch Dogs Legion is not a difficult game. The Platinum Trophy is difficult purely because of the collectibles and the fact the game is very very mid but there's a trophy that lies outside the Platinum Trophy and that's called Long Live Dead Sec and that's for beating the game on the new hardest difficulty called Resistance Mode. This mode is absolutely fucking crazy. You first... Ah! Ah! Oh my god! I just need a fucking breather right now, kids. Jeez! It's just, where do I even begin with telling you how hard this is? Every enemy in the game is elite. You cannot fast travel anymore. You get instantly detected in stealth. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Oh! No! <laughs> he was the best one! And I found that there's five or six really difficult levels, but the open world was just as hard as the actual story because you had to be so careful where you were going and losing the wanted level was so difficult because of the flying drones. Oh my god, this is insane. Finally, there is every operative you have in this game. If they die once in any mission other than a couple which have checkpoints, they are gone forever. So you might get yourself a little little operative who you fall in love with or maybe just think he's a solid bloke. You know, I, I don't want to talk about my uh, experiences with um, gaming characters too much, but they can die at the click of a finger. You know, you turn the wrong corner and you're literally dead. It is absolutely brutal. And I never thought an Ubisoft trophy would be so hard. Destiny 2 is one of the most successful and most played games of all time and for good reason. Bungie have completely mastered the looter shooter genre with their Destiny series and they continue to support it even to this day with massive expansions. It has one of the most complex and rewarding character and ability systems of any looter shooter I've seen with a decent enough story to boot. The Platinum Trophy is one I've had my eye on for some time. I'm a big lover of looter shooters and having the Platinum Trophy in one of the best games in the genre is a big achievement. The base game only hosts a total of 14 trophies but will take you around 200 hours to beat, which means you'll be playing for tens of hours between the Moorish sound of a trophy pop. When you look at the trophy list and the guide for this game, it can be a little bit deceiving, and that's just due to the ever-changing state of the game. So when it comes to the hardest trophy, the Prestige, it was originally for completing the Leviathan raid on Prestige difficulty, which was the first big raid of the base game. But due to all the updates, the trophy is now earned for completing the Nightfall Strike raid on Grand Master difficulty, 
So alongside this change in requirement for the trophy comes a massive jump in difficulty. The raid is set to a power level higher than you, what you can actually achieve with your character and it will require three other players to face. So if you want to be in with a chance of beating this, you need a team of four players, each with fulfilled maxed out characters and you all have to be really skilled at the game to boot as well. It requires a complete understanding of Destiny 2's complex class system and a high skill level in first person shooter games. It's a monstrous task. Oh, no! Fucking idiot! Now next is from the amazing game Elden Ring. This is definitely still one of the best games I've ever played. It is just fantastic. Taking the Souls pawn gameplay and moving it to open world is just so fun. It makes the game, I would say, a little bit easier than the other from software games that I've played, just mainly comparing it to Bloodborne. Because it's open world, you can kind of run, run around and level up and tackle different bosses when you get stuck. So it feels like the the ability to level up, especially the first half of the game, you know, you get stuck on a boss, that's totally fine. You just move on to a different one and get stronger and go back. And it is a really good time, especially when you play with friends. The fact that friends can jump in to an open world game is just absolutely fantastic. And the hours and hours of fun you can have alone and with other people means Elden Ring is an absolute must play. Now, it's not one of the hardest games on this list by any stretch of the imagination, but there's one trophy that will make most people struggle, and that is Shard Bearer Melania, and it is for beating the optional boss Melania. She is in her own little section, which is actually quite hard to get to, and she is without a doubt the hardest boss in the game. She really tests you, there's two stages. The first stage is actually, I found okay. I think I got to her second stage, first try, but fighting her in the second stage is a real test. Hardest boss in the game. Yes, you can use your little clone bro to kind of help you out. Come on, Mimic Tia. It's another Chadwick. Yeah. There's two Chadwicks. Regardless, it is a really challenging trophy that will push most gamers. For our next trophy, I went back to the community post for some inspiration. Well, inspiration and for the lols. And when I did, I saw someone mention a single trophy that I couldn't beat years ago when I tried. Did, however, have to sit through an entire essay to see it. So the next trophy on the list comes from the game Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4 follows Nathan Drake's final treasure hunting adventure and it's an amazing end to his story which boots some beautiful visuals and great gameplay. Now the base trophy list on Platinum is a pretty good experience which isn't too difficult but once again we must look to the PS4 DLC trophy list to find this trophy and it is called It. The trophy is earned by achieving 3 stars in all the 10 stages of the DLC on crushing mode. The DLC is a survival mode and it's a real toughie. To get this trophy you need a dedicated team of four players who know the layout of every map and of course are good at the game. There is however a healthy group of gamers who will help you achieve this but you have to get your brown nose lipstick out if you want to convince them to help you. Personally I've never played these games before but it's no secret that the Yakuza games are absolute masterpieces but they're pretty challenging in terms of platinum trophies and just trophies in general. And today we're going to be talking about Yakuza 3, specifically the mini game master trophy. To pop this behemoth trophy, you'll need to complete every single mini game available on beginner, intermediate, and expert modes. Just to put this in perspective, there are around 60 mini games. If you can't get that with all the modes as well, as keep in mind some of the mini games have actual subcategories as well, you're in for a long and miserable time with this trophy. These type of lists are always a great opportunity to hear from other gamers. And I've heard from you through the community posts, so I thought I might as well hear from some other trophy hunter YouTubers. So I asked my good friend Zach from ZXL to share with me one of his hardest trophies. Zach is a little bit older than me, but we are very much like kindred spirits. And the best thing about our friendship is that seeing him fumble through his adult life just reminds me of everything I have to look forward to when I get real responsibilities. Anyway, let's hear what he has to say about Space Overlords and why one of the trophies is such a challenge. What makes this game so, so grubby? What makes it ultra rare? How do these two things coexist? What is going on here? Well, it's a 20 hour grind for one trophy. The Overdrive Overlord Goldie rewards you for destroying 250,000 buildings. Quarter of a million, yes. But here's the catch. You can only destroy 145 of them in one run. You can then quit out, reload, do another 145 and so on and so forth. But this will take you over 1700 runs. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just... Each run will take a minimum of 45 seconds and that's if you don't hit a load screen delay. In all, this will take you over 21 and a half hours to earn this trophy. Good luck. The Monster Hunter franchise is a well-known and loved series. They're great MMOs that you can pick up, sit down, relax and slay some monsters after a long day at work. 
unless you're going for the trophies. Then this franchise fits in the tedious category better than Jesus fitting in the bees geese. Now most trophies from Monster Hunter World are very tedious, but the trophy we're talking about today, Mini Crown Plaque, stands out above the rest. To pop this trophy you have to get the small crowns from most of the monsters in the game. The catch is, they're completely RNG. Of course they are. You have to jump into a game and hope that you find the small monster. You're going to be killing hundreds of the same monsters over and over again. Good luck. Overwatch is one of the most popular first person team shooters ever made. You take control of a cast of heroes with their own abilities and player styles, and it has a big emphasis on team play as each hero can be used to complement each other so well. However, when Overwatch 2 was released, things got really weird and they really fucked up the trophy list. They essentially created a new trophy list containing all the trophies for Overwatch 1 as the main trophy list and DLC related to Overwatch 2. It's a very confusing state of affairs and when you actually search for the original Overwatch trophy list, it actually doesn't show up anymore. I've never earned a trophy in Overwatch, so I'm not sure if they've delisted the game or they've just merged the trophy lists. Either way, I've never seen this be done with a game before, so it's just very, very confusing. And to top it off, a lot of the trophies in the original game are glitched or unobtainable, so, you know, it's a real cluster. But that being said, if you are brave enough to attempt the trophies in Overwatch slash Overwatch 2, whichever it is, you're in for a disgusting challenge. The trophy list consists of many character-specific kill-related trophies, and considering this game is online only, that is brutal enough. But one trophy takes the cake for its difficulty and its stupidness. The floor is lava. For this trophy, you must get three killing blows as a character Lucio while war riding in a single life. Not only do you need to be excellent at first person shooters, you need to master the Lucio character. I can't even imagine how long this will actually take. Yes, it can be earned through luck, but the chances are you're probably going to have to play the game for at least 50 hours to be good enough to attempt this single trophy. Let's step away from multiplayer games for a second and talk about a single player game which has annoying trophies for a reason that is the bane of all gamers lives. I have very mixed feelings around the Mafia series. I never played the first one but I played the second and third. Mafia 2 was honestly such an amazing experience when I played it. A gripping story with sound gameplay but Mafia 3 is a game that earns a spot on this list. It was released in 2016 and you take control of Lincoln Clay in the city of New Bordeaux. The game actually feels like a step away from the Mafia series because instead of being part of the Mafia, the game is more of a map clearing, mob killing game. The story is pretty good, but the repetitive cycle of clearing mob bosses for two or three hours in the open world just to get a sniff of the story driven gameplay just means this game completely misses the mark. It feels very much like the open world tasks are just filler to make the 60 hour story even longer. And none of the trophies in Mafia 3 are particularly hard, but the problem is that so many of them are glitched. So the trophy you'll find most difficult is just you and me, which is for assigning all nine districts to one of your overbosses. It's simple enough, but the trophy tracking is so bad. It's reported that the most consistent way to actually earn this trophy is to beat the whole 12 to 15 hour game in one sitting while leaving your console on. So it's going to take a big boring commitment if you want this trophy, and hopefully it won't glitch for you. Remnant from the Ashes is a game I played a couple of years ago and I was still new to the From Software kind of genre of gameplay and it is still to this day one of my favourite games of all time. It's essentially a third person shooter roguelike game taking elements from the From Software gameplay but it is still very much its own gameplay and it's just fantastic and how it works is you know there's in the game there's only four, three or four worlds and each world has a couple of bosses you might face but what's so cool about it is the bosses are RNG. So you might face two to three bosses in each world, but there's actually six to eight bosses you can face, and the bosses you face will be completely different. The Platinum Trophy is, is quite challenging. It's like a From Software style game. It's like a six or seven out of ten. But the hardest trophy exists in its DLC. And I've died. <laughs> Great start, Plat bro. And that is the Dominator Trophy, and that is for playing its new roguelike survival mode and surviving to wave 10. This trophy, it's definitely my top five hardest trophies of all time. Essentially what happens is you get plopped in a world with no weapons, no ammo, and you can buy one gun and one mod and they're RNG, they're random every time, and you have to make your way through a round. Now the round consists of one boss at the end, and when you beat the boss you go back to the hub and you have a little bit more money and you can kind of upgrade your character, but it's completely random every time. And not only that, every time you beat a boss, the enemies level up and become more difficult. And then every three or four worlds, the bosses themselves become even harder. They have more movesets, they do more damage. It is just ridiculous. So not only do you have to learn the movesets for the 15 to 20 bosses, you also have to learn the movesets to these 15 to 20 bosses for three variations because every three or four worlds, they become harder and they have new movesets. So it's like memorizing the movements and the attack patterns of 60 different bosses makes it brutal. And not only that, getting to 10 waves in a single run is about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. You could be all the way into your 8th, 9th, 10th wave and then die and have to start again. You can do this in co-op. I did it in single player because in co-op, the bosses 
do more damage and have more health. And we found that I tried this for about six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours with a friend. And we found that whenever we got a wave nine, the bosses were just basically one shot on us. But in single player, you get a little bit more leeway because they don't do quite as much damage. There's definitely bosses that if you get in the late end of the run, you're just fucked. So, you know, you could spend 40 minutes getting to wave nine and then face this boss and think, well, I can't beat this boss because they just one shot you regardless. One of which comes to mind is a barb of terror. You had this move where you just shot these daggers out, which were basically so hard to avoid that it was basically just a run ender. This trophy pushed me so much. I've never had such sweaty hands as I did going for this trophy. A list of the hardest trophies ever couldn't exist without Super Meat Boy, the critically acclaimed indie platform developer by Team Meat. You take control of Meat Boy, a little red cube dude, as you embark through some of the hardest platforming ever made in a video game to save his girlfriend, Bandage Girl. This game boasts a 10 out of 10 difficulty with a completion time of over 100 hours. Not only that, less than 1000 gamers actually have this platinum. So if you have it, you're amongst some of the most elite gamers in the world. And the hardest trophy is called Impossible Boy. And this is earned by completing an entire no death run of the hardest world in the game, Hot Nally. This trophy isn't just a platinum breaker, it's also a people breaker. The amount of frustration you will experience attempting this trophy cannot be put into words. Our next trophy comes from the game Kingdom Come Deliverance. If you haven't played this one, you're missing out on probably the most unique RPG experience ever. Warhol Studios spent years and years developing their take on the most realistic medieval RPG ever made, and I think they can successfully say they achieved this. You take control of Henry, the son of a blacksmith, and after his village is destroyed, he is thrust into the world to make it on his own. In most RPGs, you take control of the destined one. You know, by the age of seven, you can shoot laser beams out your eyes and one-shot guards who have tens of years of experience. This game is the opposite. You start with no combat experience, which makes combat an absolute nightmare. Henry cannot read, and he doesn't even own a horse. The Platinum Trophy, while not incredibly hard, is a long one taking around 100 hours, but a lot of this time is going to be spent building up Henry so he can actually hold a shield or read a sign. But the trophy that makes it onto this list is actually not required for the Platinum Trophy at all. It is DLC Trophy. Warhorse Studios introduced a hardcore mode, and in this mode, all the enemies are stronger and do more damage, of course. There is no regeneration, but also you can't save unless you sleep in a bed owned by Henry or purchase very expensive schnapps. As well as that, there's no fast travel and there's no waypoints on the map. So you actually have to learn how to use a map where you are and where you need to go. It's crazy. You also have to select two of the negative perks that will affect Henry throughout the entire playthrough. And these perks range from things like receiving less total experience, stamina recovers much slower, to even a perk where Henry sleepwalks, which means every time you actually save the game, you wake up in a random location. And the hardest trophy is called tis but a scratch and it's not for beating the game on hardcore no no it's for beating the game on hardcore with all nine negative perks activated i can't imagine the agony of actually attempting this due to the unforgiving nature of the game's combat it's a game that you really can't prepare for i will say this though i love this game so much and you know someday i might actually go for this trophy and if you comment tis but a scratch and if you do it i will definitely consider it if you want to talk about games that have hard trophies, we cannot skip the truly agonizingly difficult Max Payne 3. Nine years after the events of the second game, Max Payne finds himself as a private security contractor working for the Branko family. When trouble strikes and one of the sons is kidnapped, there's only one man for the job. The trophy list for this game is truly grueling, but everything pales in comparison to the silver trophy, The Shadows Rush to Be, which requires you to unlock and complete the infamous New York Minute Hardcore mode. This sets the difficulty to normal, but you have to worry about completing each and every chapter in under a minute with permadeath. This trophy will make you pull out your hair in frustration from one fail attempt to the next, and it will require extreme precision accuracy as kills and headshots award you more time on your minute timer. The platinum trophy for this game is sadly unobtainable, but this trophy is a true challenge of skill and you can still earn this trophy today and it's still worth having. Godspeed to anyone crazy enough to attempt this, and if you have it, you can off. The next trophy is from the game The Darkest Dungeon. Take control of a group of flawed heroes as you fight a ton of monsters through the dark. The game is a very difficult turn-based dungeon crawler that, that follows classic D&D rules alongside the combat, which means every stat you have is being measured when both your heroes and enemies attack. Plus it also has a ridiculous amount of RNG relating to the enemies you fight, how much damage they do and how every fight will play out. I don't really think I can summarize how difficult this game actually is, but when a game relies on patience, high levels of knowledge and skill plus RNG, you know it's a ball buster. So yeah, the game is pretty dark, but this trophy is even darker. The hardest trophy is called World End, and is for beating the game on the hardest difficulty. Not only do the monsters hit harder and dodge more, this mode also contains some auto failure conditions, and these are to beat the game in under 86 weeks, and to have no more than 12 heroes die throughout your entire playthrough. Not only that, the final boss is reported to be absolutely disgusting, even on the easier difficulties. But that's only a problem if you can actually get that far. Next, we have a trophy that I failed. And I failed it for a couple of reasons, but the difficulty was definitely the main reason. And that is the Stormy Ascent DLC for Crash Bandicoot 1. I am calling quits on it. My time with Crash feels like it's coming to an end. I just 
feel like I'm done with the game. I feel like I've got no energy left to push through this. Crash Bandicoot is a classic game. It's a tough platformer. I never remembered being as hard as what it was when I was a kid, but it will really push you. The Platinum Trophy requires a lot of mastery. You've got to do all 20 to 25 of the levels, get the time trials, get all the gems. The trophy I don't have, which I think is the hardest by far, is called an Ancient Antiquity, which is for doing this speed run on the Stormy Ascent level. Now, most levels in the base game, the Ghoul's Relic is achieved in under a minute and a half. Some may be two minutes, but most of them are between 45 seconds and a minute and a half. This level to get the Ghoul's Relic is four minutes 30. It's got so many difficult sections in it that you really have to master. The end part is so difficult, but there's easily six or seven parts of this actual level, which are just brutal. And if you've got this, well done, because you're a better gamer than me, apparently. If you thought the Dragon Ball Z grind was brutal, you better grab a seat for this next one. Dragon Ball's Universe. Dragon Ball's Universe is an MMO set in the Dragon Ball Universe. Surprisingly, it gives a different take on the usual Dragon Ball storyline. It mixes things up by introducing new characters and different timelines, which is a welcome change. What isn't welcome is the amount of RNG most of the trophies are actually tied to. And the one we're talking about today, the worst of them all, is the full ultimate power trophy. For this, you need to gather all super attacks, which does sound simple enough. However, the super attack drops are tied to specific quests and they're all completely RNG. This means of course you'll be grinding for hours and hours and if the RNG guards aren't on your side you'll be grinding for absolutely nothing. Red Dead Redemption 2 has made it onto almost every list video I've made and for good reason. It's one of the best games I've ever made with a ridiculously long and frustrating trophy list. It's a game I have not planned for good reason. It asks way too much of you. From reaching level 100 online, which I have actually done, to finding all the collectibles in the game and to finding every single animal. It's a big time slog and I know earning the platinum will destroy my pleasant memories of Arthur in the Wild West. Alongside the trophies with hundreds of hours of grinding, there's also a trophy that will test your nerve in a different way with good old fashioned skill. And that is a silver trophy called Gold Rush. Yes, I've just said it, and the fact that it's only a silver trophy despite its name is reason enough not to do it. This is for earning 70 gold medals across the story missions. This involves completing each mission within the time limit while also completing the optional objectives for each mission. Thankfully, there is 104 missions to choose from, so you can skip some of the harder. That doesn't change the fact that this trophy is a toughie. It has been updated to make it a little bit easier, but that doesn't take away from the fact you have to replay most of the missions 3, 4, 5, even 10 times to beat. My best advice would be to watch a video guide before attempting each of the missions, because some of them are quite long and can last up to 15 minutes. Even if you manage every mission first time, this is still a 25 hour time sink. The chances are the single trophy will end up taking you 50 to 60 hours. On the plus side, at least you're playing one of the best games ever made, but you might not agree with me after earning this trophy. Next we're going to hear from another guest, Phil who runs YouTube channel, Figer. My name is Figer and I'm on a quest on getting the Platinum Trophy in Payday 2, but there might be one trophy in particular that might pose quite of an issue. I'm talking about the Overkill Salutes You Trophy, which tasks you with completing all 31 heists the game has to offer on at least Deathwish difficulty. Not only will you need a pretty decent group of people to play with, because the brain dead AI won't be much help in solo, but you have the game actively fighting against you as well. Payday 2 is using the full processing power of the PS5, running at a stellar 30 FPS, but feeling like 10 the entire time. Combining that with frequent game crashes, bugs, my inability to stealth, and the fact that I decided to do all of this with ZXL of all people will make this trophy one of the hardest I've personally ever attempted. Kudos to anyone who's gotten this one. Next we're going to talk about one of my favorite games on the PS3 and Xbox 360 generation, Devil May Cry 4. The DMC series is renowned for its difficulty, and I am pretty sure one of my friends actually has a platinum in Devil May Cry 5. When DMC 4 released, it sadly was released without trophies back in the day, but when it was re-released on PS4, it came with a brand spanking new trophy list, which is arguably one of the hardest platinum trophies in the series, and maybe one of the hardest platinum trophies ever made. The game takes a step away from Dante, the main character in DMC 1, 2 and 3, and introduces us to the sulky emo Nero. I imagine this probably raised a few eyebrows for the fans of the series, but for me, it was my first game, and still to this day, I've got a special place in my heart for Nero. Plus Dante comes into the game a little bit later on as a playable character, so it's a win-win. Using Dante and Nero and a host of other characters, you must slaughter a lot of demons, but with style. Devil May Cry 4 has so many difficult trophies, it's really hard to list just one. The game requires seven full playthroughs across all the different difficulties, and the trophy that made Devil May Cry 5 so hard is here as well, and that is called Tonight We Dine in Hell, for completing the game on Hell and Hell mode, which is the mode where you will die in one hit while all enemies have the health and aggression of one of the hardest difficulties. So with the seven playthroughs combined with this trophy, you're going to be playing certain story levels hundreds of times to try and master them. But the hardest trophy is actually related to the Bloody Palace, and it has a great name, 
King of the Palace, and it's for clearing all bloody palace mode stages with an S rank. Most characters have super costumes in this mode, which can make it a lot easier, but again, S rank on all 101 stages, you have to play without the super costumes. Well, at least for the first 100 stages anyway, you might be able to get away with it for the final stage. And because of the story related difficulty trophies and the trophies related to the bloody palace, I think it's safe to say that this is probably the hardest Devil May Cry platinum you can go for, and maybe even be one of the hardest platinum trophies ever made. The next is a trophy that sounds so simple, you must think there's absolutely no way it could make it onto a list of the hardest trophies ever, and it's from good old Final Fantasy IX. In case you didn't know the score with Final Fantasy IX, it follows the Dan Tribal as he and his allies unravel a conspiracy that threatens the fabric of existence. Final Fantasy games always have a dark, deep story, but this is always offset with the colourful, friendly worlds and relationships that are built across the story. Now, the trophy that earns a place in this spot is called Hail to the King, and it's for achieving 1,000 jumps without tripping while playing jump rope. Sounds simple, right? Well, this trophy comes with a few issues. Firstly, the jumps will get faster and faster as you make your way up to 300 successful jumps, which does involve a lot of button tapping and a lot of learning the increases in speed. But around the 300 jumps mark, the game makes you do a gallop for each jump, which is essentially a double jump through a double tap of the cross button. That means from 300 to 1000 jumps, you have to press the cross button 1400 times in sync with the speed of the rope. This trophy is so hard there's dedicated guides just for it. It's a trophy that cannot be underestimated. For the next trophy, we are going to take a trip over to the infamous Camp Crystal Lake, where we will find ourselves in the terrifying world of Friday the 13th, brought to us by Gun Interactive. It's not matter dead by daylight, the objective is to kill or survive depending on if you're a counsellor or the machete-wielding Jason himself. It is worth noting that the platinum and most of the trophies are unobtainable now, due to the developers breaking the tracking system for the PlayStation and refusing to fix it, but this game was honestly a buggy mess even before that, and it just loved to crash and fill anyone who plays it with horrible memories. Perhaps one of the worst nightmares for this Platinum when it was obtainable was the Silver Trophy, the final chapter, which required you to play a total of 1,000 games as the world's biggest mommy's boy, Jason. Yes, 1,000 games, and if that wasn't bad enough, unless you had friends that hated themselves as much as you did for deciding to go for this trophy, actually playing as Jason in public lobbies would be near to impossible with everyone wanting to play as him themselves. If you have this trophy, I salute you, and probably the three or four friends you played with because this is a truly grindy game which will drain your soul. The next trophy comes from horror personified Alien Isolation. Let me just set the scene for you. It's been 15 years since the disappearance of Ellen Ripley and her daughter Amanda is on her way towards a space station, Sylvester Paul, to see if she can pick up the trail. A slightly different experience from today's modern Alien games, you'll find yourself running and hiding from the horrifying Xenomorph more than trying to fight it. The plan trophy for this game is truly terrifying, but one thing that stands out is the gold trophy called One Shot, which requires you to complete the entire game without dying a single time. Now one would think that since there isn't a difficulty requirement related to this trophy, it would be quite easy, but that's so wrong. Even on the easiest difficulty, if the Xenomorph sees you and sinks his teeth at you, it's game over. And you have mere moments to try and reload your save before that save is lost forever. If that wasn't horrible enough to worry you, I haven't even mentioned the infamous facehuggers. If you see one of those pesky little legs, or you hear their movement and you can't see them, it's too late, you're dead, and you have to start all over again. And not to mention, the game will make you shit your pants at least a hundred times. Trials Fusion is an amazing game that lets you ride a bike through some pretty crazy and creative obstacle tracks where you'll need an insane amount of skill and dedication to complete. The game as a whole is a lot of fun, however the trophies just aren't. And today we're talking about, is there anything you can't do trophy? To pop this bad boy you need to complete 120 track challenges ranging from beginner all the way to extreme. So it's highly recommended to get comfortable with many different types of bikes and tracks. It's by far the hardest trophy in the game and it's also worth noting the game is ranked out of 10 difficulty for you trophy hunters out there. There's actually not even a platinum for this game which makes it even worse. Iron Bread is a ridiculous game where you control a slice of bread with the objective becoming toast. The catch is if the bread touches certain areas like the floor for example it becomes less edible. Now this sounds a lot easier than what it actually is. The game is notoriously hard, ranked at 9 out of 10 and it's no surprise we're talking about the Terrafile Trophy which is earned by achieving A++ on all 7 levels within the Cheese Hunt game mode. This means you need to become toast in quite a speedy record time. Yeah I've lost my appetite. Next is a trophy from Shadow of Mordor. I played this game recently and I stand by it is still one of the best games out there on PlayStation. So this game came out during like the, the height of open worlds. And this game takes loads from Batman Lantern Asylum, loads from Assassin's Creed and just put and puts a big Lord of the Rings franchise on it. But the story is fantastic, the gameplay is so good. And I feel like when this game came out, I don't think open world fatigue had kicked in with many gamers as much as it has now. You may feel the same in this, like games like Horizon Zero Dawn, Ghost of Tsushima, 
fantastic games, but because you've been playing open world games for six, seven, eight years, I feel like I've got this overarching open world fatigue where I just, I've played them so many times, I spent 60, 70 hours doing all these collectible runs for Platinums. An open world game now kind of makes me just feel a bit off. And I think this game came out before that really started kicking. And the game isn't difficult, but there's one trophy in the DLC is absolutely brutal. The actual game has difficulty of 4, 5 out of 10. Now this trophy has difficulty of 8 out of 10 and it could arguably be way, way higher. Now this trophy is called The Hunt is the Mistress and it is in one of the DLC packs. To do this you must complete the main and secondary objectives in the Test of the Wild and it's just insane. You have to do it four times to get a high score to get this trophy. You have to kill five of the war chiefs, they're the big bosses, every single orc captain, so that's beasts. You have to acquire 13,000 points and do it in under 14 minutes. A real tough trophy. And next, of course, is another Monster Hunter game. And we have to keep up the trend. On the last video, we had Monster Hunter World. So in this video, we're going to have Monster Hunter World Iceborne, the DLC of the actual game. It comes with a fresh new trophy list, which is really cool, because if you loved grinding for crowns in Monster Hunter World, well, you can do it all over again. In this DLC, the trophy is called True Large Crown Collector. The premises is the same. You just need to slay a certain amount of monsters over and over again until you get a large crown for each one. <laughs> The only difference is the monsters are actually harder than this and the train is always working against you so it's just way harder than the actual base monster world and it's just more and more endless RNG grinding. Just what you wanted, right? We're going to show the PSVR some attention next with Terror's Effect. Not only are games difficult on VR because of their gameplay, also because of how long you can actually last in the VR. Some people just cannot play it at all. I found the more you play it, the easier handling the disorientation becomes and you're going to need to play a lot if you want this brutal trophy in Terror's Effect. The game takes the classic game Tetris, throws you into virtual reality and makes it a massive rave. It's a very cool game. The hardest trophy is called Seriously? Seriously. And it's for earning SS rank everywhere possible. While it doesn't actually require you to achieve this on every level, there are still 12 to 13 levels you have to earn the SS rank on, including the journey mode and the endless modes. You'll have to have the forward thinking of a chess grandmaster and the reactions of an F1 driver if you want this trophy. Alright, it's time for another guest. I thought I would make a new friend for this video, so I reached out to someone called Jeremy Bentham. But since he's American, he probably pronounced it like Jeremy Bentham, which we all know is not the Queen's English. Nonetheless, he's going to talk about a game that I can bet barely anyone watching this can beat. My hardest trophy ever is without a doubt the Platinum Trophy for Super Meat Boy Forever. Just like in the original game, Super Meat Boy Forever has all of these no-death runs. For every world in the game, you need to beat every level without dying. For me, I found the most difficult run to be Dark World 4. There's just no room for error in any of these levels. If you're a little bit too slow as you're climbing these bombs, you're done. If you forget to punch to speed through this toxic goo, you're done. If you fire this purple orb to break the box too early, you're done. Every level can just kill you in so many different ways, it was absolutely absurd. I think one of the main differences from the original Meat Boy game is that you can't slow down. It's an auto runner, so your character just goes and you have to keep up no matter if you're ready or not. Most of these Dark World runs took around 20 hours to beat. It was just a ton of time of memorizing these levels and getting my muscle memory to be perfect so I knew exactly what to do at every moment. Our next game on the list is Dishonored. Set in the steampunk-inspired city of Dunwall, you take control of Corvo as you use stealth and supernatural powers like teleportation and time manipulation to fight through the city and prove your innocence. I feel this is a very decisive game and when people think about this game, they fall into one of three categories. Firstly, the diehard fans who think it's a masterpiece. Secondly, gamers who appreciate everything the game has to offer and think it's a decent game. Or well, the final group who can appreciate the gameplay and its uniqueness but ultimately think it's a little bit mid and I fall into the latter category. I have beaten both Dishonored 1 and 2 and although I enjoyed them enough to finish the story, I was always left thinking, what was the hype about? I do however think I need to revisit the series which I think I will do this year to give it another fair chance. The plan for this game is a little bit demanding and has a healthy 6 out of 10 difficulty but the hardest trophy is from the Dunwall City Trials DLC and it's called Void Star. For this trophy, you must complete all normal and expert challenges with a 3 star rating. And that includes completing the 10 unique challenges and reaching a score of 30,000 in each for the 3 stars on both difficulties. All of the challenges are demanding and require knowledge of the entire layout of each mission, but the hardest is by far the challenge called Kill Chain, which consists of 6 to 8 rounds within it. If you've done this, well done, and if you're going to go for it, well, good luck. List about the hardest single trophies would not be complete without including the game that has arguably the hardest platinum trophy ever made, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a rhythm based dungeon crawler with a twist. Players have to navigate dungeons, fight monsters, collect loot, all while moving in time with the game's infectious beat.
eight. It's a game that requires extreme amount of concentration as soon as you pick up the controller to play it. The hardest trophy is called Lowest of the Low, and it might just be the hardest trophy ever made. To unlock this trophy, you have to beat the game on the all character run, which involves beating the game a total of nine times without picking up a single item or healing. The developers are complete savages for even making this trophy. The guys take this game will take over 900 hours to platinum, and I wouldn't be surprised if you're gonna spend 300 or 400 hours of these just trying to beat this one trophy. The next trophy is from Elder Scrolls Online. It's a game I've spoke about in another list, but the trophy for this game is just so disgusting I can't leave it off this list. While playing this game, you get to create your own character and embark on a massive journey across all of Tamriel, complete quests, take part in PvP wars, and of course kill a lot of spires and skeletons. This is an MMO built for Skyrim and Elder Scrolls fans, but just bear in mind, each single trophy will probably end up taking you between 5 and 20 hours. But the hardest trophy in the game is a multiplayer based and it's also reliant on a selfless other player to achieve and it's called Emperor and you guessed it, you have to become the Emperor of your faction. But to do this you must have the most points in your faction leaderboard and then have the current Emperor demote himself or you must be nominated by other players. This single trophy will take weeks and weeks of play as you log in daily to rack up points but I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up taking months and months. You'll also have to do a lot of e-begging to get the current Emperor to demote themselves. I get that it's an MMO and they follow their own rules in relation to gameplay and trophy lists. These type of trophies just seem utterly ridiculous to me. If you have this trophy and the Platinum, make sure to comment down below so we can all bow down to you. When I've made lists in the past, this game has been mentioned a lot in the comments and I think it's time to do it justice. The next trophy comes from the game Trackmania Turbo. This is not your average racing game but rather a game with wild tracks, fast turns and a Platinum trophy that is 100% guaranteed to cause some form of mental health problem. With over half a million players on most popular trophy hunting websites there's still only 1800 players who have this platinum so yeah it's a real test let's just take a moment to send our prayers to the 1800 gamers who are probably lying on a therapist's couch right now the hardest trophy in this game is a real doozy and it's called end of the road a name that mimics how you'll feel after each gaming session trying to unlock it the trophy requires you to earn a gold medal in all 200 tracks in the solo campaign yeah i'm just gonna say that again for effect all 200 tracks just wow. Personally, I found that I'm actually a little bit gifted for racing games, which is ironic since I can barely drive in real life and I don't have the attention span to finish a racing game, let alone go for something like this. So to me, this trophy is absolutely unobtainable, but we have it. Well done, Buckle. Our next game is a real time sink and comes from the game Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville. By all accounts, this is actually a pretty decent game. It's a botanical battle royale where you control a plant or zombie character and fight it out. Although the game itself is a good time, just like most of the games on this list, the trophy called Time to Seriously God's Side is a grind more vile than that milk you left in the fridge that you forgot for four weeks. Yeah, this is very much a monthly problem for me. The trophy requires you to promote 20 characters to the rank of master. This involves getting each character to rank 10 and promoting them and doing this five times, which equates to a combined level of 1000. There has been some new methods discovered recently that can speed this up, but even with the new methods, you're going to have to play this game for over 100 hours just to get this one trophy. We're going all the way back to PlayStation 3 for our next trophy with The Amazing Spider-Man and movie tie-in games. You know what? I actually miss them a lot. Yeah, most of them are totally rubbish, but they were made in a time before gaming really became mainstream and took off. Now, even with a small team, great games could be made from movies. Maybe. <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man released on consoles in 2012, and it's set after the events of the first film that takes the whole mutant powers from animals to a whole new level, with most of the bosses you fight being some form of animal human hybrid. Now this isn't actually a hard game or platinum but there is one downright rotten trophy and that is called On The Fly and it's for collecting 700 Spider-Man comic pages scattered across the open world. Now what makes this trophy so frustrating and difficult is that they do not appear on the map at all until you find 500 of the 700 pages and because of the open world following a guide would just take absolutely ages so you're probably going to spend 10 to 20 hours just spinning around the city trying to find them and of course this is pre-insomniac Spider-Man so the web swinging is just absolutely pants. <laughs> For the next trophy, we are stepping into the zany dead infested chopping mall within the classic game Dead Rising. Join Frank West on his mission to escape the plague mall with some of the craziest weapons ever made in a zombie game. This game is just fantastic with hilarious ways to slaughter zombies and disturbing bosses. Beating this game is an unforgettable experience. Despite the light-hearted nature of the game, there is a single trophy that requires some serious strategy and that is 7 Day Survivor. This trophy requires 14 hours of real play time so that you can manage to survive the 7 days. Thankfully that isn't 14 hours of constant play as you can be smart and stock up and kind of hide, but you still need to have a massive understanding of the game and know where the safest places are to wait it out. You also have to move between sections as the clock ticks down because alongside the time plug for this trophy you also have to be careful of glitches. So not only can one wrong move completely end your run, there's also a chance that the game could completely bug out and crash which would end your run as well. While this is not as hard as some of the by other games on this list, due to the constant time commitment and the uncontrollable glitches, it is a tough cookie. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty was already a decently tough trophy back on the PS3 HD remaster, requiring you to beat the game several times including on extreme to collect all the dog tags.
mechanics, not mention completing all 500 plus VR missions. But the Master Collection takes it a step further. Whilst Konami thankfully have removed the Mammoth VR requirement, they have more than compensated by adding a trophy for achieving the infamous Big Boss rank. This trophy alone can easily push this game past a 10 out of 10 difficulty, with it demanding you to clear the entire tank and plant chapters on extreme in under 3 hours with no kills, no continues, less than 3 alerts and firing 700 or less shots, which means you have to even keep track of how many tranquilizer rounds you've used throughout the game. It's pure brutal, and I'm shocked they made it even harder for the PS5 stack. But we're moving on from one solidly hard Metal Gear title to another and rejoining Raiden in his badass ninja form with Rising Revengeance, as we take control of his high frequency blades, slicing and dicing our way through countless enemies in the Devil May Cry like spin-off. Now you can't expect any Platinum Games hack and slash titles to be easy, and the trophy Stormbringer makes sure you don't forget that fact. For this legendary feat, you must clear every eligible fight in the story mode with an S rank, and this will require a lot of trial and error as you learn how to reach those high scores. You've got to learn to fight smart, focus on avoiding damage, building up your combos, and much more to earn this prestigious trophy. But you know what, Platinum Games aren't finished with the ball busting difficult Platinums just yet, as their fast paced third person shooter Vanquish is renowned for its difficulty. Now the campaign on hard mode is actually quite forgiving to complete, and whilst there's no trophy for not dying in a single playthrough, this can actually easily be earned by simply never slightly continue and loading your last checkpoint. So if playing the game on hard is cakewalk, where's the difficulty? Well this lies purely in the challenge mode, where you must complete 6 separate missions to demonstrate your badassery, but challenge 6 is the real deal breaker in its difficulty and its ability to lock people out of this Platinum. This challenge makes the rest of the game look like child play and is the exact reason this ranks is a not 10 on difficulty. Each stage gets progressively harder and more unfair until you reach the end where you must fight two bosses at once. This challenge will really test your reflexes, adaptability and above all else, luck, as sometimes it can take one unlucky attack from a boss to end it all. Whilst it may suck to go through the challenge hell in Vanquish for a single gold trophy, Wolfenstein 2 could do you one better. The game hosts a bronze trophy that will send a shiver down every trainer's spine, Mindleben. This immensely difficult challenge is one of the most infamous amongst trophy hunters, requiring players to practice countless runs to memorise areas, sharpen their reflectors and potentially attempt some of the skips within the game, which is a point of contention around the earners of the Platinum. Do you cheat away to victory or do you earn it like a true Ken? So on this mode you're tackling your Nazis on the hardest difficulty with permadeath applied and with plenty of opportunities to alert a guard or make a vital mistake during an assault which will instantly end your run and put you back to square one. The only way to beat this is nothing but trial and error. You're going to have to spend weeks if not months practicing bosses, practicing sticking points and honing your gunplay. It's a really impressive trophy. The next game on the list has us fighting our way out of an impressive alien takeover of Earth with XCOM 2, where the alien menace has all but eradicated XCOM and you must rebuild your forces to save humanity. But one of the hardest trophies, exquisite timing, you're going to have to speedrun your way through the campaign in a measly four months on Commander Plus difficulty. This is so much harder than it actually sounds, as you won't have any time to create any overpowered units, and you have to make sure you constantly clear missions with near flawless ratings, as you can't afford any downtime for the elite squad you'll be training up for the next mission. You'll either need an insane amount of XCOM knowledge or a guy to be able to earn this trophy, but because of the RNG nature of the XCOM gameplay, even this might not be enough to get you through. And it's about time we talk about our favourite orange marsupial and his insane requirements for overachiever in Crash Bandicoot 4. I may have eventually conquered my fear and the platinum for Crash Bandicoot, but Crash Bandicoot 4 scares me more than my own browser history after a weekend bender. This trophy will pop once you watch the bonus ending for achieving 106% game completion, which is no small feat. You'll need to earn all 456 clear gems from the combined 76 standard non-boss levels, that's including the normal and inverted mode, the four colour gems, earn and complete all 21 incredibly difficult flash back tapes found within levels as well as master each stage for all 38 insanely perfect and platinum time relics. This is truly a trophy dedicated for someone who hates themselves more than I hate myself. Splasher is a game that is so hard that despite it being released seven years ago, still to this day it has less than 70 people who have the platinum trophy. Yeah buddy! Lightweight! It's a platformer that made it onto my list of the hardest 25 platinum trophies, so if you want more details on this, make sure you check out that video. Nearly all the trophies in this game are brutal, but there's one that stands above the rest. I am Legend, and it's for earning all the platinum medals in the game. To earn this trophy, you have to speedrun all 22 levels for time, which will involve thousands of attempts, but that's not it. You've then got to speedrun the entire game three separate times, including a 100% run, which involves freeing all the splashers in the entire game. This trophy is absolutely no joke. Next we are going back to the franchise that has been around for a long time, Ninja Gaiden. Most people have played a Ninja Gaiden game at some point in their life, especially if you grew up with a PS3 or Xbox 360, but I can't tell you I have much memory of it. This is probably due to the fact that these games were way too hard for my younger self. The game that makes this list is Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which is available through the Ninja Gaiden collection on PS4. This originally came out in 2012 and is a hack and slash game, and just beating the game once will pose a challenge for most gamers, but if you want the Platinum Trophy, you must be prepared to beat the game a total of 7 times. But the hardest trophy actually comes from the Ninja Trials, and it's just called ultimate and this is earned by beating the three ultimate ninja trials originally on ps3 you could use co-op to help you with this 
but in this version, you've got to do it all on your lonesome. Each trial will pit you against many endgame enemies and bosses, and some of the trials will put you up against two of the bosses at once. Yeah, I think I'll pass on this one. For our second last game, we're going to jump into the Resident Evil franchise and into the most famous city, Raccoon City. But not for any of the great Resident Evil games, the next trophy comes from the game Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. One of the most hated Resident Evil entries, I say one of because despite the series having some of the most loved games of all time, they also boast a lot of stinkers and this game is one of them. The game is a 4 player third person shooter and you play as one of the special operatives tasked with fighting your way through the infected Raccoon City. Whether you enjoy this side step from the normal Resident Evil gameplay or not, if you want the Platinum Trophy you're going to have to be a master of everything the game has to offer so you can beat the trophy Great Success which involves getting S rank plus on every mission on veteran or professional difficulty. I would just recommend you know what you're getting yourself into before you attempt this one. It's time for our final game on the list, and it's a game that I really want to try in Platinum, but I'm quite scared of it. Marvel vs Capcom 3. Take control of your favourite Marvel and Capcom characters while crying in the corner, trying to get the trophies in this game. With a 10 out of 10 difficulty and tens of disgusting trophies, Marvel vs Capcom 3 is for elite 2D fighter gamers only. I struggled enough with a sequel to the game, Marvel vs Capcom Infinite. Marvel vs Capcom 3 consists of the standard 2D fighter trophy list with plenty of online trophies, but the hardest trophy by far is called Master of Tasks. This requires you to beat all 480 missions in mission mode, which means every mission with every base game character. And these are not your standard missions, but rather combos that must be completed in perfect time with rapid reaction time. Each character has 10 missions with each becoming harder and the combos becoming longer. I could barely manage 50 of these for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. If you have this trophy, you're just insane. And there you go guys, 50 of the hardest trophies on PlayStation ever. Been a big list. Thank you for making it to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.